Here we are in the middle of a Sunday afternoon opening weekend of the 65th annual Ford Boat Sport and Travel Show, Indie Sports Show Live. Check out all of the opportunities to catch these great presentations that we've been having with all across the spectrum from vendors to the pro staffs to the professional uh, the seminar folks, you name it, we've got it all here for, for you. We're in the Travel Cafe, we're in the Champions Pavilion. Remember, we're gonna be doing this next weekend as well. Show Within a Show starts Thursday, which is the Deer Turkey Waterfowl Expo. Come by, have something to eat, sit and visit, and we're gonna get right to it. My great friend, Joe Thomas, who I've known for quite some time and a regular contributor to my radio program called Indiana Outdoors, Joe. Hey, it's Brian. Good to see you. Good to see you, man. I don't have a fancy shirt like you yeah, do. Yeah, you know, it's uh, it looks even it looks even better in the lights. You yes, know what it I mean? does. Yeah, yeah. So you know, we're doing this Facebook Live. Right. We're doing the YouTube Live stuff across the uh, Indianapolis Boat Sport and Travel Show platform. You, you of all people have been mentioned on this couch by your fellow peers across the spectrum. I hope in a good way. All in a good way <laughs> yeah. about you understand. The business you understand the media you understand social media you've got a big presence 20 25 thousand people across instagram twitter facebook youtube you name it well you know that it's it's become such an important part of what we do you know our main main thing with outdoor channel is tv and the linear assets but you know you always try to you know you want to build the popularity of your shows and of you you personally so this is a great way to do it i i think this is one of the coolest things that that i mean i've been doing this show i i, I to admit it, but I've been doing it for 25 plus years, and uh, it was one of the first sports shows that anyone ever booked me to speak at. And I've watched this show just evolve and grow, and and you know, and then to come here and have this this week was it's it's amazing with the lights and the cameras and, and going truly out the lights streaming. and the cameras, yeah. you know, with the the TVs and people can come and actually hear yeah. Joe Thomas talk and share a little bit of his story. Right. Consistently, people have said one of the hardest working guys in the industry. You have three shows on the Outdoor Channel. Yep. Steel's Reel in the Outdoors, mm -hmm. Pelican, Ultimate Match Fishing, yep. American Archer. Yep. How the heck do you do all that? Uh, stay, I stay on the road. You must have a staff of what, 50? Uh, no, I wish I wish I could say I did. I actually, uh, the two hunting shows, we actually produce in-house and we have a we have a production company called Real Outdoors TV. We're in Oxford, Ohio, down by Miami University. I have a really talented and a really dedicated producer slash business partner that makes that work. And, and you know, he's one of those guys. He's not afraid to work 80 hours a week if he needs to. And, uh, you know, and then on the other stand, you know, I work for some really great people with American Archer. That's the guys at Wolf Creek Productions, and they produce uh, some of the great shows on Outdoor Channel, like Wardens and Gun Dog TV and American Archer and Outdoor America. And I was really fortunate to become part of that that crew as well. And you know I love to hunt, man. Right. Yeah. So, I know. I mean, fishing's kind of my main gig, but hunting, I love to hunt. Well, you've uh, you're very proficient at both. I tried. You, to be. <laughs> you, you, you retired from the professional bass circuit six, seven years ago. That's correct. Yeah, six you years were, ago. You've been fishing for 25 years. Yep. And you're going to be back next weekend at the Deer Turkey Waterfowl Expo as well. Right. This weekend, uh, I'm here. I was here yesterday. I'm going to be here today uh, doing bass seminars on the hog trough, and uh, which is my normal gig. And then, uh, but next weekend, we've got something I'm super excited about. You know, I we produced a series for uh, My Outdoor TV, which is uh, Outdoor Channel, oh, Outdoor Sportsman's Group's online streaming service, and it's, it was called the 29. And basically, I I, I had. I had a goal, a lifetime goal, uh, and it took me about 20 years to get it done, but it was to take all the North American 29 animals in, in, w with a bow. And I, I ended up taking 27 to 29 with a the bow. There's only about 145 people ever done it. That was like a life dream to me. But then the coolest thing was it was all on camera because wow. of, all of them were during filming of, of the various t television shows over the year. And so uh, the folks at Outdoor Channel said, "Hey, let's 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 make a let's make a documentary series." And so we put together this ten-part series that's available on My Outdoor TV called The Twenty Nine. Well, then I get with with Kevin Renfro here at the Sports Show, and you know he kind of keeps up on what I'm doing. He's like. What if we did a stage version of that? Like, let's do a cut down, you know, version. You know, pick your best three or four, you know, hunts, and, and let's just condense it down to about a 45-minute presentation, and let's take it to the to the uh, Deer Turkey and Waterfowl Expo, and that's that's what we've done. And and um, next week will be the if you come next Saturday at four o'clock, you'll be the first ones to see it. <laughs> oh, that's very cool. Yeah, and uh, we're excited about. it. We've been working on it for for a few weeks. You know, you take something really big and try to make it dynamic 
make, but to cut it into 45, 50 minutes is kind of difficult, but I think we've done a good job. My producer's done a good job. So you've got uh, bass fishing sessions, seminars today. Yes. Have you seen the new uh, sportsman's, uh, the presentation lounge over there? Oh, yeah. A lot better. Oh, yeah. Everything, like I said, I, I keep bragging on this show because it is such an amazing, it's like it just continues to evolve. And I, you know, I, I can remember back in the day, I mean, 20 some years ago, being in the big oval arena over there with nothing but a rod and reel and a microphone in my hand, and now I've got all these these assets to work with here. You know, you can just bring a lot more to the people. You know, you got an auspicious start in bass fishing. You're using those big words again. I know, Brian. Well, you know, I've got I've got great people that feed me great big words, but uh, you kind of fibbed your way into your first bass fishing tournament, Man, didn't you? You got to tell about that. Yeah, I, it's a it's a good story, but uh, yeah, I. There was a, a bass club, uh, let's just let it all go, okay? There was a bass club in Cincinnati, and it was probably the, the largest, uh, most prolific club in Cincinnati. It was called the Kingfisher Bassmasters. And my best friend was a member of the Kingfisher Bassmasters, and I was 16 years old, and I desperately wanted to be a part of that club. And, uh, and he said, we just won't tell them how old you are. You're supposed to be 18. And so he... He kind of, I think he strong-armed a couple of the guys, and a couple of guys looked the other way, and they let me into the club at age 16. Uh, they kind of looked the other way and let me in. And ironically enough, you know, by by the time I was 18, I had I won the club championship and then went on to win that very same year the Ohio State amateur title. So I think they were glad they it let me do it. It was a pretty good it. bet on yeah, their part. Yeah, one. and and you know, it's funny. Um, yesterday at the show, I was getting ready to go up on the tank, and uh, and uh, two of my buddies that were in my bass club the first day I ever walked into a meeting, Derek Derek Tillery and Rich Dickman, they came up and they come every year to this show to see me, and that's been, I mean, it's been 40, 35, 40 years, you know. It's that just crazy. is a great story. Yeah. Let's stay on the subject of being young and the yeah. new generation of fishermen. Yeah. yeah. You retired from the competitive side, but right. you're still very much involved in the industry. Yep. Keeping your fingers on on the pulse, the proliferation of these clubs, that's a big word, you want me to talk a little no, slower? I like that word, that's a good word. The, yeah. the proliferation of college bass fishing, high school, mm -hmm. I even learned with some interviews we did yesterday, junior high clubs, yeah. how is that changing professional fishing? It's all for the good, I mean, I think that a lot of the blood that you're seeing pumped into this fishing industry, uh, in a lot of ways, not just new people, but also in sales to some degree, a lot of it has to do with that, that high school and college level fishing. But for so long, you really didn't have, you had, you know, you had bass clubs, which were, were adults, and, and then you had the, the semi-pro and the professional levels, various levels. But that, that eight to 18 year old didn't really have anything. And so now with, with you know, it started with the juniors, which mean they were taking the six to 13 years, or six to 15 year olds, and they started junior bass clubs and Bassmaster embraced that and so did FLW. But there was still that gap, you know, in that, that four or five year gap. Well, that's where the high school and the college is filled in and the college thing is just is blown up, you know. Now, we did a we did a collegiate version. People, you, you'd have to go back and, and really dig a little bit, but about 12 years ago, we did a collegiate version of Ultimate Match Fishing. It was the third season, and uh, there were only about 31 college teams. Now there's hundreds. And uh, we were before our time, I think, and it didn't, re it didn't get the reception that I think that, that it should have. I think we did something like that today. It could be huge. Well, again, I know I'm bragging on you here a little bit, but a consistent message from your peers is that you're always a step ahead. Try to you're be, always, yeah. you know, this idea of, for those that don't know, what is ultimate match fishing? Yeah, because well, that that truly has blown up. Yeah, ultimate match fishing. You know, it's it's hard. we blinked and it was on the it's been on the air for 14 years. But it's basically the the, the unique thing about ultimate match fishing is it's, you've got you know anglers from the the Bassmaster circuit, anglers from the FLW tour, and they compete head to head. Well, now you have the new circuit, the you know the the Bass Pro League. I'm sure we're going to use anglers from that as well. The bottom line, I want the best fishermen in the boats, and and uh, we have a referee and a line down the middle of the boat, and. I and if I told you much more, I'd have to shoot you. I want them to right. watch, you know yeah. what I mean? But the new episodes start in July. Awesome. And it's, it's exciting to watch, yeah. So now that you have an opportunity to be on the other side, watching, hosting your shows, mm -hmm. creating an environment of competition that you, mm -hmm. you hope to have, mm -hmm. What are some of the mistakes that you see fish, bass fishermen make over and over and over again? And if only you could say, stop doing that. You know, 
in my seminars, I tell people, I said, you know, one of the biggest things that the average angler does, you know, obviously not not the, 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 the professional angler, but the average angler that goes out bass fishing, they're always looking for a magic bullet. You know what I mean? They're always looking for that one lure or that one color that's going to get the job done. And I see a lot of them that they fish, I, I say this in every seminar, don't fish more in your tackle box than you do in the water. You know what I mean? You know, you should have a couple baits that you feel proficient with and based on, on the, the, the general conditions, if you use those baits and you move around and you and you, you, you try to fish the right type of stuff, those baits will work. But man, when you just spend all day long you know, trying to find the perfect lure, you really never get dialed in on what's going on. And I think that's the biggest mistake most people make. You've been an early adopter of technology in the boat. Mm -hmm. To your point about don't spend more time trying to pick the lure yeah. and avoid putting a line in the water, mm -hmm. The electronics in today's world have allowed you to do that a lot more proficiently. Oh yeah, yeah. The the electronics, you know, some of the the things I, you know, I, I marvel. I, I did a I did a show. I we were talking off the air. Uh, I did a show a, a few weeks ago, and we were we were in 50 foot of water catching spotted bass. And I was I had my hummingbird unit. I you know it's a Helix 12, and and I'm able to see with the down image and the sonar. I could literally see my lure on the bottom and I could see the fish on the bottom, and I would know when a fish would, I knew before they were gonna bite, because they would come up off the bottom, and it was, it was, it's, it's, it was pretty intricate. Thank goodness the guy I, I was with was a real expert at it, but I learned so much that day, you know, and, and electronics is allowing the fishermen now to get offshore and, and, and be able to explore places that, that they would have never even tried before. I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of places, you know, that, that are off the, the bank and off the beaten path that still haven't been found yet. No. Have you done everything you wanted to do in the outdoors? I know we're talking about fishing, but now the hunting side, uh, you've got shows on that. Have you done everything that you wanted to do? It, it, I'm getting close. You know, I, I've been, I, 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 that, you know, everybody's got a bucket list, and mine was just like mountainous. And I just, the more I, the more I do, the, the more it seems like that I want to do. But you, you do kind of reach a point where you, you, you start to circle back on things that you really love to do. I mean, there's, there's certain, you know, elk hunting for me and moose hunting are the two things, if I could go do them every year, it never gets old to me to be able to call those big animals in. And I, I, I get really excited about that. And I've really tried to start really researching and trying to, to be able to do a, an elk or a moose hunt every other year because I really enjoy it. And I'm, I'm circling back. I'm going to places that I just really, I went to Greenland about seven, six years ago Ago and I, I, I hunted muskox and I'm going to go back this year not so much and I'm not going to hunt muskox I'm going to hunt caribou they have a, a, a caribou there that's that's amazing and it's in the mountainous country they live in and, and I just I'm going more to to go back and spend time with the with the outfitter and his and his people as I am for, to, for the hunting you know so you know I've mentioned several times what people have said about you and your reputation and hardest working guy nice guy on the circuit what is Joe Thomas how do you describe yourself well, I think that uh, I never take myself too darn seriously. That's number one. And, and you'll and, fit into any sports show live real well. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the other thing is, is, is when you when you were raised competing against the best fishermen in the world, you, you can't have an ego. And I think that that's one of the probably the, the biggest thing is you know, it, you know that sport teaches you to be to be humble and humility and and bow hunting does too. I mean, no matter how good you think you are, how great a shot, how good a hunter, there's always going to be a scenario thrown at you that's going to kick your butt. And and fishing and hunting continues. I, I try to get. I try to get better at it, but I, I, I know that you know every day is different, and you you, you got to be able to put that behind you. So I guess if I, if anything, it's just I've really tried to just you know remain humble and just you know I'm blessed to do what I do for a living, and I love I love what I do, and uh, and try not to look backward too much. I kind of like to keep looking forward. You know, most people would say it's a life dream to host three distinct television shows, have an extraordinarily successful competitive bass fishing career when you were doing it. And it's kind of like you've been there, done that. Mm -hmm. You got to do something yeah. to to stay ahead of the game. Mm -hmm. What does the next twenty years look like? Well, you know, I, I, we're looking at we're looking at uh, some collegiate stuff. You know, with Ultimate Match Fishing. I mean, it's there's nothing set in stone, but we, we are looking at that. Um, I, I I'm looking at probably um, just starting to do more uh, more from a digital standpoint. You know, with uh, um, 
you know, with, with our advertisers and people that want a little bit, you know, they want TV, but they also want, uh, you know, the, the digital presence. And I think we're getting more and more involved with that. And we're, we're you know, we're going to continue to create a lot of content too. And when you've done as much, as many things as we have, and you have as much footage in the can, there's a lot of content out there that, that has not been seen. And I think we're going to probably continue to do a lot of that. But the bottom line is, I'm still going to be going fishing every year, every year as many days as I can. I'm going to still be picking my bow up and going hunting and, and just, uh, you know, and just, uh, you know, I've still got a couple kids at home too, to watch them grow up a little bit. You talk a lot about the success. There had to be some hard times. What'd you learn from the hard times getting started in the business? Well, you know, the hard times, the hard times were at the start of the business, but then there's been some hard, you know, there's been some, some bumps in the road along the way too. And, and the one thing that, that I learned, you know, is that is you don't take, you don't take anything for granted and and if you're not if you're not looking ahead, you know there's a there's an attrition rate in, in any business and 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 in, in hunting and fishing TV and in hunting and fishing as far as uh, professionally, you know you you take sponsors to make it work, and and if you get complacent and you get lazy, uh, you don't deliver for them. Uh, you know the, that's that's when things go bad. So I'm constantly looking for new ways. You know, we've got this amazing stable of sponsors. You know I've had steel power tools for. 24 years. They have backed me, and 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 they're they're very happy with what we do. But we're always looking for a new way to, to deliver for them, to deliver customers, and to deliver views for them. And, and and that's that's the biggest thing that I would say is you know always looking forward to make sure that you know the hard times don't happen again. Well, that's kind of like Renfro Productions, and that's why they've been around 65 years doing this. Absolutely. In the short time that we have left, so much of your life has been on TV. Yeah. What's something about Joe Thomas nobody knows? Oh man, you have to throw those those doggone <laughs> things at me. You juggle, you uh, no. amateur cook. What do you got? I've got a I've got a 35 pound brown standard poodle that <laughs> sleeps in the bed with me every night. I and, never and it, would. It was my daughter. We bought it for my daughter two years ago. It's the funniest thing. And I'm not. I mean, I we I raised bird dogs when I was growing up, but. I'm one of those guys that dog belongs in the kennel, you know what I mean? And and we get this this standard poodle, and it, it's my daughter's dog, but it is chosen. It's going to sleep with me every darn night. You can kick it out of bed 50 times, and finally I just said, you know what? We're buddies. <laughs> so that's I, I just I just confess live, you know. You know, yeah. you never know what's going to happen here at the Indie Sports Show live. Joe Thomas, truly one of the nicest, hardest working in the outdoor world. We now know that he has a poodle. Yeah. I never thought I'd hear that. Standard coming. poodle. Standard poodle. It's a big one. <laughs> I can, I it can, can retrieve a duck if you needed it to. Are, do you paint his nails? <laughs> I do not paint his nails. My daughter might. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Folks, we're having such a great time. Hopefully you're going to make your way out to the 65th annual Ford Boat Sport and Travel Show. Come by the Travel Cafe. We're in the Champions Pavilion. Come up and say hello to great people like Joe Thomas. Uh, he's going to be at the uh, doing seminars later on bass fishing. Next weekend, he's coming back for the Deer Turkey Waterfowl Expo, and you heard him say you're not going to want to miss his onstage presentation next week. First time anybody's going to be able to see it. I am the host of Indy Sports Show Live, Brian Pointer. We're getting ready for the next one. Stay tuned. Awesome, my friend. Good.